Hello, welcome to chapel today, the first chapel of 2021 on January 6th. Today is a very special day in the year of the church, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. I'm glad that you're able to worship with us wherever you are, at home, someplace out there in the internet. We're glad that you are here and glad that you can take this time to gather together with others who are worshiping and praising God. So, let's begin our chapel services as we usually do by listening to the ringing of the Salem bells. It's a reminder for us that we are here to learn about God's word, to hear, thank, praise him in all that we do. So, as you listen and watch the ringing of the Salem bells, say a silent little prayer asking God to be with you in your chapel worship and in all you do. Let's listen and pray. Our first song today is a fun one. It's This Little Gospel Light of Mine. So to do this one, we're all going to start with a gospel light. You're going to need your thumb or your finger, whatever works for you. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Ready? This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine all around the neighborhood. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. It will point the way to heaven. It will point the way to heaven. I'm going to let it shine. It will point the way to heaven. I'm going to let it shine. It will point the way to heaven. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Thank you. Let's begin our chapel worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're going to have a responsive reading that talks about this time of the church year. It's Epiphany. So as we read responsively back and forth, listen to what our responsive reading has to say about Epiphany, and we'll talk more about that in our message. Right now, I'm going to read the parts that begin with L, and you're going to read the darker parts that begin with C. Let's begin. Epiphany means, behold the light. It is a time of letting our lights shine. It is not a time for hiding our lights under bushels or basket or letting Satan blow it out. It is a time for letting the light of Jesus shine all around our neighborhoods and point the way to heaven. The light shines in the darkness, even though the darkness does not understand it. God's love goes forth to all nations, both Jews and Gentiles. For we are all one family under heaven with one Lord, one faith, one hope, and one baptism. Jesus said, You are my witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea 
to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus tells us also that we are his witnesses from Afton to St. Louis County to Missouri to the United States and to the ends of the earth. May God's light of love and faith burn brightly in us, for a city on a hill cannot be hidden. We've been going through Luther's small catechism and reviewing those parts this year. We're going to continue that today, and we're all the way up to the ninth commandment. So please read responsibly on the screen as I read the parts marked L, and you respond with the parts marked C. This is our ninth commandment. What is the ninth commandment? You shall not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house, or get it in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. Let's sing a Christmas carol that talks about the wise men coming to see Jesus. This Christmas carol is called the First Noel. Noel is a French word that means Christmas. So those of you who don't know this or aren't quite good enough readers yet, the refrain happens, and you can sing along with that, the refrain happens over and over. So the refrain goes, Noel, 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 four Noels. Born is the King of Israel, which is Jesus. So let's sing together the first Noel. How was your Christmas? That's a question I've been really wanting to ask people. I'm sorry that we're not here because I love to hear the stories about Christmas and all of the things that you did and all of the things that happened over Christmas. I want to know, did you get any fun presents? I bet you you got at least one. What was your favorite present? I bet it was a great one. I had a good present too. But now we're in January, 
So tell me, is Christmas over? Are we all done with Christmas? Have you taken down your tree and maybe the decorations in your house and maybe in your schoolroom? Are you all out of presents? Or maybe by now have some of your presents kind of gotten boring or maybe they don't fit or don't look right? Well, you know what? It's not time to be done with presents. Today is a special day in the church calendar. We don't remember it so much in our yearly calendar for the whole world, but in our church calendar, it's a very important and very special day. Today is actually the last day of Christmas. Remember that song, The Twelve Days of Christmas? Well, if you start the day after Christmas and count to 12, Today is the 12th day of Christmas, and in our church calendar, we have a special word for that. It's called Epiphany, and that's what we celebrate today, Epiphany. So the word Epiphany in language means appearing, or all of a sudden, I get it, I understand, I see it. And what do you think we're talking about in the church when we talk about appearing, a talking about epiphany. There could be a lot of different things, and let's talk a little bit about that. In the church year on epiphany, we remember the day that the wise men came and found Jesus and worshiped him. Just in case you don't remember, I'm going to read to you the story from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. This happened while Herod was king of Judea. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. Now we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about it, he was very upset. Everyone in Jerusalem was troubled too. So Herod called together all the chief priests of the people. He also called the teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. This is what the prophet has written. He said, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people Israel like a shepherd. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men. He found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report it to me. Then I can go and worship him too. After the wise men had listened to the king, they went on their way. The star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them. It finally stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So they returned to their country on a different road. That's the story from the Bible about the wise men. What did the wise men do? They came and they worshipped their Savior. They knew that Jesus was born to be their king and to be their savior. And how did they worship him? They brought him gifts. Now, just a little side thing. We always talk about three wise men. We don't know how many wise men they were. We just think there might have been three because there were three gifts. And all of those gifts were really fancy gifts. They were, they were worth a lot, and they were gifts that you would give not to just a child someplace out in the middle of the country, but you would give to a king. They brought him gold and frankincense, which is really smelly incense, smelly stuff that you burn to uh, make things smell good, and myrrh. 
an important uh, thing that people used when they were anointing a body, getting it ready to be buried. But it was very expensive, and it was a very important gift. So guess what? There's more presents, still more presents today. Yes, and you know what? In some traditions, and in my family, we give each other gifts on Epiphany because the wise men brought gifts to him. So I and my family will get a little gift today to help remember that. So what do you think? Are these finally today on Epiphany, are these the last, last gifts? Are all the gifts broken and boring and all of that good stuff? Well, you know what? That's not true. There's one Christmas gift that's completely different. It never wears out. It never goes out of style. It never breaks. You'll never get too big for it. It's the one true gift that Christmas is all about. Can you think about what that might be? I've got it right here in my Christmas gift bag. Let's take a look and see. There it is. Can you see it? It's the baby Jesus. The baby Jesus is a very special gift from God to us. So why is baby Jesus such a special gift? Well, the Bible tells us that all who believe in Jesus and are baptized will become children of God. Imagine that. That's one of the reasons that we pay such close attention to baptism, because that's the way we become children of God. So why Jesus? What did Jesus do? Well, first of all, he became human, just like you and me. Just like us, he came to earth, and he grew up, and he followed God's laws, and he died and he rose again to take away our sins. Everybody in the world, their sins are forgiven because of Jesus. That gift we see in this. Jesus died on the cross and rose again for us. That is a great gift. Our sins are forgiven and we can go to heaven to live with him. So when we become children of God, we have everything that goes along with being a child. You know, when your mom and dad, when you say, they're my mom and dad, I'm part of your family, they give you all sorts of wonderful things because you're their son or daughter. The same thing with God. Because we're part of his family, he gives us wonderful gifts and privileges. God will love us, and God will protect us, and he will provide things that we need to survive, that's a wonderful thing. And the best part of it is, is that it never ends. It never goes away once we are God's children. In Psalm 23, verse 6, the Bible says that God's kindness and love will be with us every day of our life, and we will live in God's house forever. What an exciting gift. What a great gift to have. That is our best Christmas gift that we got this year and every year. Now, that gift is so great. Do you want to keep it to yourself? I don't. I want to share it with everybody we meet. It's not just for me. It's not just for you. It's for everybody. And that's one of the exciting things that the Epiphany story tells us. Think about those wise men who came. They weren't part of Jesus' family. They weren't part of Jesus' country. They didn't belong there. They traveled a long way to get to see Jesus. They weren't even part of Jesus' religion. But you know what? Jesus was still their savior. Jesus is savior for everyone. And on Epiphany, and during the Epiphany season, we'll talk about this in church and chapel for the next few weeks, we hear how Jesus didn't come to save just a few. He came to save everyone. And Jesus is Savior of the entire world. And that good news we don't keep under a bushel. We let that good news, that light, shine to all people. 
Just like the wise men came to worship Jesus, we can worship Jesus, and we can invite others to worship Jesus as well. So during our time of Epiphany, we remember the very important gift of Jesus for us and for the world. And we concentrate especially on sharing that gift, that good news, that love with everyone we meet. Let's pray together. Would you pray the prayer that you see on the screen? Dear Jesus, we remember your command to make all people your disciples. Enable us to spread your word throughout our neighborhood and beyond. Bless the missionaries and their families all around the world. Take care of them. Give them joy in their work. Be with all who share your love. Amen. Now let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, may the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing one more song that reminds us about going out and telling that great good news, not just here, but all around the world. Let's sing, Go Ye Into the World. Go ye, go ye into the world and make disciples of all the nations. Go ye, go ye into the world and I will be with you there. I am the vine, you are the branches, ever the fruit to bear. I am the light, you the reflection everywhere. Go ye, go ye into the world and make disciples of all the nations. Go ye, go ye into the world and I will be with you Thank you everyone for spending time in chapel worship today. Next week, we will be back in school and some of you will be back in the sanctuary and some of you will be in the gym. And we appreciate those of you who will still be watching over the internet. Thank you very much for our, your worship time today. Let's finish up with our chant. Grace, strong. Faith, strong. Salem, strong. Go in peace and serve the Lord. May God bless and be with you today and in all you do. See you next week.